writer says Star Trek 4 is still on the tracks. I was going to speak about this writer in two topics because this person's also involved in a Sleepy Hollow remake, reboot. I love Sleepy Hollow from back in the day, one of my favourite. I think it's a Tim Burton movie, I'm pretty sure it is. Might not be, but I think it is him and Johnny Depp. Fucking loved that movie, I was obsessed with it, watched it numerous, numerous times. It's been a TV show. Why are we rebooting this, man? It was seriously, why are we doing it? Why are we having another Sleepy Hollow movie, potentially? I'm talking about diving down and doing something unique to the story and unearthing the true concept, the themes that are explored. Doing something different. I suppose that should be lauded, but fuck, it's been done. It's been done well. Leave it alone. Do something new. But the same writers involved in the writing of Star Trek 2, or Star Trek 2, Star Trek 4, I'm thinking about Sleepy Hollow 2, Star Trek 4, and they have uh, come out and, and gave us an update, and it's a surprising update, it's Lindsay Anderson, Beer incidentally, what a name, the names just keep coming, Mid Thunder and Beer, why you mean called Beer? Just make me want to drink a beer, just now, I think I need one. And it says it's still on the tracks. Uh, it's surprising because we have had the likes of um, Chris Pine coming out and obviously your man that plays Spock who I'm blanking on just now, um, Zachary Quinto. They've come out and they've spoke about this potentially being dead. I, I, I spoke about Zachary Quinto about a month, month and a half back how he was passing the baton over to the chap who plays him in Strange New Worlds. I think it's called. I've been watching it. I don't know how I can't remember the name of it. It's clearly one of those nights for me. So these guys have, have been speaking about this in past tense. It's over. There's no real updates. There's no motion in place from the studio Paramount, that is, for a continuation of their universe. So naturally, everyone's kind of moved on and thought it's done. It's dusted. It's finished. But yeah, I read this and uh, apparently it's not. They're actually working on a script. It's on tracks, the tracks, and yeah, I'll, I'll read it. I'll not speak for the actual writer. I'll actually read their words uh, straight from the, the cats. The horse's mouth, sorry, not the cats. And the cat would meow. Horse would do, I don't know. Uh, we're not going to get down horse, making horse noises. I'm not fucking Yon Desmond's or whatever the fuck they're called. <sighs> Crazy horses, we're not doing that. Um, that's actually a party piece of mine that I actually can do a good impersonation of that but not tonight this is what I had to say they were speaking to Collider about it being stuck in development purgatory limbo hell if you'd like and they said, they said this it is it's still on the tracks I love that project and it was another one that I had to hop off of to direct this movie I don't know what movie they're talking about um, grab that little thing out, the hair there, out of the air there it's a little annoying piece of hair or dust or something and that was a hard thing to do but I love that everybody involved I love I, let's we'll just get back we'll go back in time with ten and re-pronounce that or, or speak that last sentence here because that seems like really wacky fucking English or perhaps my brain's not working but I love that everybody involved with that project but I love that everybody involved with that project. Now that's definitely butchered English. I think they mean, but I love everybody involved with that project. Well, I mean, they seem to love it as well. Um, Chris uh, seems to have enjoyed his time as James Tiberius Kirk. Likewise, Zachary Quinto, uh, Spock, obviously Carol Urban. Carl Urban. Scottish people can't say Carol. We like to say Carol as in the carols you sing at Christmas or the, the female name, Carol, and um, we can't say Carl. You need to be English or, or American. Carl. Carl. Can't do it. But I digress. Urban, your man, he seemed to enjoy himself playing Bones McCoy. Uh, and, and obviously you've got Zoe Saldana, you've got an incredible cast, but there is one glaring omission there. Emission. Omission. <laughs> There's one person missing, and it is obviously the late, great, and I'm going to fucking bank his name here just as I was about to say it. Holy shit. Your man that passed away, I'm banking on his name. He was the same age as me. Holy fuck. He was in Green Room. Uh, the dementia is kicking in hardcore here. I'm going to search him up. You know that? I am going to search him up. I'm going to take it off screen. I don't want to search it up. 
actually want to just get the name on my own, but I'm doing a fucking stream. So it's just not going to work. It literally left my brain as I was about to say it, which is fucking terrifying. I can't tell you. 2009. Where is he? Give me his name, bitch. Come on, where is he? Holy fuck, where is he? I forgot Chris Hemsworth was in there. Jesus Christ, he was the father, wasn't he? Anton Yelchin. I would never have got it. I had Yelch in my mind, but I didn't have Anton. Anton Yelchin's not, he's no longer with us, sadly. The man's been away for about seven years or something. I remember vividly, I was out playing snooker. When the news came up that he'd tragically passed away, and it, was, it actually took the wind out of my sails, the, the air out of my lungs. It shocked me. Deeply is a fantastic actor. I'd seen him in numerous things. Salvation, obviously, Green Room, as I spoke about. Um, Star Trek movies, a brilliant young actor. He was in his mid 20s at that point, like me. And so much promise, such a, a bright future. And obviously, that was ripped away in one horrific moment. But his absence is going to be a hard thing to deal with. It's not like you can explain it away because he didn't die. He didn't even look like he was going to die in the previous movies because, of course, they planned to do multiple movies after this, potentially featuring this guy. So how do you write out Pavel Chekhov? Do you write him out off camera? Do you put it into like some sort of, I don't know, exposition at the start of the movie? How do you explain the missing link in this Enterprise sort of crew because they're all one big familial crew that's the power of Star Trek the original crew they're all symbiotic they're linked they have this relationship and when, when one of them loses a life or something happens it puts them in danger I'm talking about Spock when they lose a life I can't think of anyone else big losing a life in Star Trek it's meant to shock you so I don't know how you can create a fourth movie and not have Pavel Chekhov in there do you recast very difficult to replace the energy that Anton brought to that character but it's such a brilliant cast I'm looking at them just now man Carl Urban was amazing as Leonard McCoy Leonard McCoy yeah Leonard McCoy <laughs> yeah Leonard McCoy Le fucking hell man Bones McCoy I was reading that there and I read Leonard Nimoy next to him in the cast listing and I'm like Jesus it actually fucking scrambled my brain for a second Bones McCoy, I always think of, him, I think of him as Bones McCoy, not Leonard McCoy. It's such a great cast, and it, it does feel like a waste not to continue on with that cast. So, again, much like the previous topic, it's about sequels, do you continue on? This is a franchise I've really enjoyed. I was always a big fan of Star Trek growing up. Um, I grew up with my grandfather watching the original. It was silly to look at even back in the 90s it was stupid the effects were very dated but the writing was there I think it's Gene Roddenberry was the writer the writing was there it was powerful it packed a punch like those great sort of Heston movies and stuff like that from back in the 50s and 60s on a technical level it may not stand the test of time but in terms of the writing of the story of the acting it's very much there it's visceral and it's enjoyable because of that and that's something I feel that's been lost, but that's a whole other story. That's a whole other conversation. Something that's been lost in modern cinema is almost that brilliant acting and just the visceralness of it, if that's even a word. Because you have got the ability to tell a story almost visually now, and the actors are almost fucking forgotten about. And we've seen that with the strikes recently. You know, and for a long time, potentially a, a bit of light at the end of a tunnel. The actual people who power these movies, the experience, the actors, the writers, forgotten about because of CG and big bombastic effects. Thankfully, guys like Nolan and Tarantino have not forgotten about it and they're keeping that fucking going. But I've enjoyed, I enjoyed the first three Star Trek movies rebooted with J.J. Abrams. I liked the third one probably more than the second, although I did like the second. I've seen all of them in the theatres. And just really, I think if Anton hadn't passed away, we would have had a Star Trek 4 by now. But I'm also conflicted because it's been so long, you haven't got Anton. Has it lost the momentum? I don't know, man. I don't know what to do for the best. I really, I really enjoy it though, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm edging towards wanting a sequel to Star Trek and somehow explaining Chekhov's demise. But cool, cool to see that it's still potentially happening, man. Time will tell with that. They are getting older now. Fuck knows. We're going to have to move it in quick. They're all in their 40s now. They're not getting any younger. 